evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as you can see up here, uh, I um, am classic and vintage bulbs. Um, specifically, uh, my business, only a small sort of hobby business up in Blackwood, uh, manufacture lighting for classic and vintage vehicles. Um, predominantly, it's all to do with, in this case, LEDs and current drain. And uh, current drain's the enemy of an Austin 7 and a Model A Ford, but it's always an enemy of an electric vehicle as well. So um, LEDs, as you can see up here, are um, ideal for getting the, the, the brightness and the longevity out of uh, any of those volts or amps that you've got. If you just bear with me for a sec, I'll just lay out a few of these bits and pieces out here to, sh to show you. I'll just take that out. <clears throat> what I aim to do tonight is to give you a little bit of a rundown on uh, the evolution possibly of some of the newer LEDs that are, uh, that have been available probably for the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, automotive anyway and um, some of the pitfalls that, um, that people fall into. Now, looking at your car park out there, see so we've got Teslas and uh, maybe Leafs and all sorts of other modern um, electric vehicles. Uh, when I came here tonight, I was kind of more thinking of people that have got a, an old Mazda 323 and they've whacked some electric motors into it or, or an electric vehicle from the 1970s or 80s. In fact, the first electric vehicle I've really had a closer look at was um, one that Bruce has got, uh, the one that was up at the Bourbon Mill Museum for, for a number of years, that I believe was the Flinders University vehicle. And um, lead acid batteries, I would imagine, in that. It's, uh, so, um, so just basically what I've got here is, as we all know, I think pretty well all electric vehicles um, have got LED lighting right the way through. Um, some of the older Priuses, et cetera, I think they had uh, uh, conventional tungsten indicator bulbs, but their stop lights and running lights and uh, et cetera were LED. And I think that some of them had xenon headlights, some of the earlier electric vehicles. Is, am I correct in that? Hybrid vehicles had xenon headlights? Does anybody know? You're supposed to be technologically savvy. I'm an old Austin 7MG guy. Okay. Um, uh, xenon was another... Uh, method of um, improved lighting with a reduction of current drain uh, that was available up until recently until LED technology has uh, overcome that. But, um, but anyway, um, what I'm just going to talk about is I've got a little list that I've written out here, just a little prompt sheet so I can get on the right track, just bear with me. Okay, um, LEDs, as we as we know, if you don't know, are very very efficient in the the way that it converts volts, amps, current into lumens of light. And uh, LEDs are always the the brightness of LEDs is always called uh, in measured in lumens rather than watts or candle power or uh, whatever or, or a, a so many lumen LED is equivalent to so many watts of light. Uh, the use of watts as a measurement of light is old school technology because watts really is a measurement of heat. Like you had a 2000 watt bar radiator in your kitchen. That's not very bright but it's very very hot and extremely inefficient in the way that it uses electricity to generate heat or light. Um, a conventional light bulb, um, like a light bulb we used to have in the, the, the kitchen that you used to buy for a couple of dollars, um, was something like 10% efficient, which meant that 90% of the energy used to light the light bulb was developing heat and 10% was producing light. And that is traditional of a, uh, a tungsten light bulb. Uh, the next step in uh, lighting technology was halogen bulbs, and you've probably have all heard of halogen bulbs. Uh, halogen bulbs, um, can be 30, 40% more efficient in producing light out of the amount of current used. Um, so when you work that on, a, on a, an efficiency scale, a, a regular tungsten bulb is about 10% efficient. Um, you can scale a halogen up to maybe about 40% better. So we're looking probably 25% heat 
25% uh, light and 75% heat. Better, without a doubt, uh, good for the 1960s, 1970s and 80s, but still a lot of current used to produce a lot of heat and not much light. The next step up from um, tungsten bulbs were uh, xenon headlights, which are a little mini arc lamp that the same sort of technologies that were used in motion picture projectors in the 19. 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, where they'd shoot thousands of volts through a little distance in a little, in, in this case, in a little glass tube to ex excite the gas to make it glow. Xenons were about 50% efficient. And a lot of uh, BMWs, uh, Mercedes Benz, and the high end Lexuses, etc., had xenon lights up until, up until recently. Recently, I mean the last five, eight, ten years. Since LED technology uh, has now taken over, um, LEDs are something like 85% efficient. And getting back, compare it to a tungsten bulb, 85% efficient means it gives out 85% light and 15% heat. Now, that is a long way from halogen or tungsten bulbs that were virtually the reverse. So you can develop a lot of light from a very, very small point source of light, like an LED, and be very efficient. So you get, a, as you know, with some of these modern torches and some of these bicycles you see on the road nowadays, with just a tinsy little light, they last for hours and hours and hours and give a very bright point source of light. <coughs> now, um, older vehicles, um, is anybody here, well I suppose everybody here has got a sort of a modern hybrid 21st century uh, vehicle I would imagine. Um, if we were to step back probably 15 years, 20 years before uh, the Prius, which is basically the first electric hybrid vehicle that was just you know, mass produced and generally available, anybody that was producing a, making their own electric vehicle would have got some little lightweight vehicle like there was something out there, was it a Getz or a, a Mazda or something that's an electric vehicle, a little hybrid? Getz. It's a little Getz. That would be an ideal vehicle to use LEDs in, in terms of removing the tungsten bulbs and the halogen bulbs that are in the headlights, stoplights, tail lights, instruments, and changing them over for LEDs and reducing current drain from something like, say, 10 or 15 amps of current drain with everything switched on down to about maybe one or two amps of current drain. And um, using that little gets as an example, that would use a halogen light bulb like this. That's just a, what they call a regular H4 halogen bulb. Virtually every motor car made since the 1970s has got a pair of those headlight bulbs. Uh, 60 watt halogen, uh, the, the state of the art for the day, but by LED comparisons, very, very inefficient. The state of the art LED to, um, to replace that today would be something like this. Now, I'll just put this back onto here. That's clever. There we go. All right. What do I have here? The important thing with with lighting, especially headlight lighting, I'm not having much trunk here. It's just push it back and get the. Okay. Here we've got a um, a regular regular headlamp. This is what they call an H4 headlamp, which is again typical for something 1970s, 80s, 90s. Um, but it gives you the shape of what they call a parabolic reflector and a light bulb that fits in the back. Like anything of the period, it was designed specific, specifically for a, a halogen bulb, a filament type light bulb with two filaments, a high beam filament and a low beam filament that gave you the dipping. When you go from high beam to low beam, you can see the pattern change. It fits straight into the back, clips in, Plug the plug on, which I have one here.
I'll just uh, fire this up if I can just work out which wire's going where. And you can see it gives a, if you can look up on the roof, there's, can you, you can all see it, creek here, or maybe, maybe I'll do it on the wall behind me. There we have, um, there we have low beam, which is what you traditionally see on a, um, can you hear, guys hear me over the back there without the microphone? Much easier to talk. Um, there we have uh, low beam with a, a flat top anti-glare low beam, and there we have high beam where you've got the concentrated throw of, throw of light. That reflector is designed parabolic shape for a light bulb. If you put anything else into it that doesn't throw light like a filament, you will get a beam of light that is everywhere other than where you want it to be. Now, I have here a number of different LED light bulbs and they're not light bulbs, should we, we'll, just call them, we'll just call them LEDs, a number of different LEDs that all purport to be H4 LEDs that you can plug into your motor vehicle and have LED headlights. They're exceedingly complicated. Some of them are very expensive and some of them are exceedingly cheap. And the exceedingly cheap ones is the ones you find on eBay. Uh, the quality is, well there's, that is just some of them. They all fit into that headlight. They all plug into the wiring and you turn your headlights on and you'll get LED light. Whether you get a beam pattern, whether you can get it past any roadworthy certificate for headlights is another matter. But you've got LED headlights. Now, you can buy those from $10, $20, $30 from eBay, but none of them give a beam pattern like I showed you on the wall there. They're all over the place. To look at the headlight with them illuminated, you look at it and you go, wow, they're bright, and oh, they're a lovely white light, but you switch them on and drive through the Adelaide Hills, you'd, you'd be driving at 10 mile an hour because you just can't see. It's only just recently that um, the leading LED manufacturers have been able to replicate an LED cluster that replicates the filament alignment that you'd find in a halogen bulb. So the light given out by these LEDs on low beam and light, high beam is almost exactly the same light pattern as shown emitted by a filament. Therefore, when you put that into a headlight like this, excuse me while I... It's all a quite a complicated bit of kit. Bear with me, I'll plug that in. Yes, so high, high and low beam, exactly the same as the original. But there's more to it than just a, a light bulb. Okay, there's the LED fitted in there. Right. Yeah, if you can do that for us. I don't need an extra pair of hands here. Who just shine that on the wall behind me? <laughs> right. If you turn that around that way. Here we go. Now, take your hands off the lens. That's it. Just hold it. Did it. That's it. Okay. What we've got there is 
low beam, like the filament I showed, like the halogen bulb I showed you earlier on. That little kick up on the left hand side is not the LED doing that, but that's the actual lens on the lamp giving that little left hand kick, which is what you'd see on your headlights of all your modern cars out there, whatever they are. And then you've got high beam. The same, so the beam pattern you're getting out of that is exactly the same as you'd get out of a halogen bulb. Therefore, for that lamp to be used in a modern motor car, whatever light is emitted out of it has to comply with Australian design rules. In other words, you can't drive a motor car with headlamps that are, the light is all over the place or they're too bright or they're too dim, they have to be safe. So uh, there you can see the colour difference. That's what they call a natural white, that's 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is the measurement of light colour, as opposed to about 3,400 degrees, which is what a halogen is. Current drain, that draws about an amp. Current drain, the halogen draws around about 5 amps. So you've got that efficiency there. So that is what they call a premium LED. But if you like to feel the back of that, that's only been on for a minute. It's, get, it's warm, isn't it? Yeah. That warm is the inefficiency, the 20%, 15% inefficiency that all <coughs> light emitting devices have of some sort of inefficiency. You can't convert 100% energy to 100% of light. There's always a, an inefficiency. Hence this little thing here, which all of these other LEDs have some sort of cooling system to radiate the heat and keep them cool because on a hot 45 degree day engine compartment temperatures on an on a, a internal combustion engine vehicle 45 degree day they do get warm and they're like anything electronic you overrun it it's going to fail so you've got to keep it cool some LEDs the I've got a little electric fans inside them. They've got little printed circuit motors in there to drag air past the cooling fins to keep them cool. Well, a great little technological feat putting an electric fan in there, but with dust and all of that that's generated inside a vehicle, especially in Australian conditions, dust gets into the little bearings, the bearings fail, the fan stops, it overheats and you cook your LED. So the the best LEDs to choose ideally are ones that have got natural what they call thermal heating in other words they just it gets warm and just air passes through them but the electronics which is the crucial part of it as well the voltage stabilizing electronics are separate in a little matchbox size a little electronic little plug-in that all fits inside the headlight and that is the as of 2020, that is the, the state of the art, that is the latest style. All this other stuff here that you can buy on eBay are all absolutely hopeless, absolutely hopeless. So, as with any headlight, whether it's a, a headlight in a Prius, a headlight in a Mazda 323, a Getz, I've got MGs, an old MG, all lighting relies on a this type of lighting relies on a parabolic reflector. Uh, like a torch, you need to make sure that the light bulb is right in the, the light bulb or the LED is right in the what they call the focal point to get a nice beam of light. The lens on the front does all of the, the left hand kick up, dipping a little bit on the road, a lot down the centre for proper driving. So anything that reflects light from an automobile, headlights, tail lights, indicators, they've all got some sort of parabolic light behind them, if they're a light bulb style of light. <coughs> Hence, you get a regular light bulb, like these ones here. These are LEDs, but they've got a regular light bulb base, which is just the push and turn sort of base, like you'd have on most motor vehicles up probably to about 10 years ago, until they started to go into what they call wedge-based light bulbs. So whereas you can get the efficiencies with your headlights and for low current drain with LEDs, 
You can also do the same with your indicators, your instruments, your stoplights on any vehicle by using an LED. And what, we, what one needs to do when you're choosing an LED is to choose an LED for the application. If you've got indicators on your car with orange lenses, you choose an LED that has got, that emits, is that going to work? <laughs> Slippery little thing. Isn't it? Go the other way. No, hang on. Get those the right way around. Okay. What we have here is that's better orange light through an orange lens gives you the maximum light transmission likewise red light through a red lens gives you maximum light transmission people go yeah, well, I'm just going to put a white LED because it's got a red lens or an amber lens. No, you use a, an LED that is the colour of your lens. The reason being is that just simplistically, if you can remember back to your high school days and physics and the colour of the rainbow, white light is what they call, as we used to call it in the day, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, violet. All of those colours make up white light. If you just looked at a, a portion of that colour, like the red part of the spectrum, that is only effectively maybe 10% of the white light that has been generated. You put a, a white light bulb, white light through that, all you're going to get is the 10% red content of that white light going through that lens. All the other colours, the greens and the, the blues and the violets, are all going to be absorbed by the the lens and only the red content is going to go through. So if you shine a red light through that, 100% of the light, in theory, passes through that lens. So you'll have the brightest stop lights. The same goes with, with the amber one. If you've got, to give you a bit of an idea of the, the difference, there's a, a clear lens. If you put a red light through that, it'll probably look more pink than red. If you put a red light through that, it'll kind of look more reddy orange because again, it's, it's, it's filtering out some of the color, but it's still going to be bright. For conventional motor vehicles, we've got, again, you can see the brightness and these only draw something like about 400 milliamps which is less than half an amp exceedingly bright and this particular one is what we use on classic cars where you're got you're looking for an amber indicator at the front of your vehicle and a white park light so when you turn your indicators on They go amber, and when you put your Parker lights on, they go white. That harks back to, again, motor vehicles in the 1950s, where your indicator and your park light were always another white light underneath your headlight. It wasn't until 1972 did all motor vehicles have to have amber front turn indicators, and the park lights generally were fitted actually inside the headlight itself. All of these little things like this are ideal for classic motor cars that A are trying to improve the brightness of their tail lights on their Ford Mustang, their Austin 7, their Mini, their Rolls Royce, their Jaguar or anything from the old school days of, of tungsten light bulbs. And this sort of LED is that I design and manufacture are uh, instant plug it in, turn it on and it works. 
designed specifically for classic vehicles. These LEDs aren't suitable for modern vehicles. I don't mean modern electric vehicles because they've already got them, but if we're talking any of these computer-controlled motor cars that have been designed since probably uh, you know, right about 2007, 2000, around about then, uh, these light bulbs will not work in them properly. You'll get error codes up on the dashboard of your car to say that there's failure of light bulbs or, or, or something like that. Um, these are designed specifically for classic cars, but the enemy of classic cars is current drain, brightness, you're going to be dim lights, you want to get them as bright as possible, LEDs does that for you without a problem. Likewise, the range of LEDs that are available, there's, there probably isn't a light bulb around that can't be replaced by an LED going back to the 1920s. Um, we've got these ones here like a little not very bright, but they're perfect for. I set light to myself. Again, they. You get the idea. They're perfect for side lights. Uh, again, getting back to. It was, it was a Getz, wasn't it, out there? Yeah, getting back to that little Getz. If that had regular light bulbs in the park lights, in the number plate light, in the side lights, and in the instruments, you turn your headlights on or your park lights on, immediately you're probably draining around about four or five amps. Rip one on the gets because it's in theory old enough, one could replace all of the light bulbs with these LEDs or a version of them um, and save all that current drain which means your the electric driving capacity of the vehicle is, is extended by a certain amount. Uh, to getting right the way down to little tinsy wincy LEDs like these again that's not particularly small when it comes to LEDs because electronic uh, com component stereo systems and radios all have LEDs in them and they're microscopically small but considering that is a, a, a seven millimeter bayonet base out of a video instrument out of an old Volkswagen Beetle or a 356 Porsche or something like that that little six volt LED goes into the little instruments on a 356 Porsche or a Volkswagen Beetle, as I said, and uses 100 milliamps but lights up the speedometer absolutely beautifully. Um, again, instant changeover. Same goes with interior lights on uh, uh, most Japanese vehicles made in the last probably 30 or 40 years, little uh, what they call festoon bulbs. Um, these are festoon LEDs. Uh, go into your roof light. How many people have, in their old school cars, have left the door open and get back to the car next day and find your batteries flat? Because a little five watt light bulb drawing half an amp over a period of 20 amps, 20 hours, you've used half the battery. An LED only uses around about 50 milliamps. You leave your door ajar, you can come back a week and you'd still be able to start it. Because again, the efficiency of LEDs. So, the last thing I was just going to talk about is um, people talk about how, how many, well, old school people used to talk about how many watts are they, or that they're not watts. As I mentioned right at the beginning of the talk, watts is all about heat, it's not about light output. Uh, back in America, they used to call it candle power. Well, back in the 1920s, a measurement of brightness was measured by candles. You know, if it's got 10 candles, obviously that's 10 times brighter than one candle. Fair enough. The English use watts as a measurement of brightness. Well, as long as everybody kept the same, was singing on the same hymn sheet, everybody could understand that a 50 watt is brighter than a 20 watt. But when you try and compare that with what's that compared to a candle power, you couldn't really do it. Nowadays, all light output is measured in lumens. Um, and the motor registration people in Australia, Australian design rules, specify on motor vehicles that the forward facing lights on a motor vehicle could be no brighter than 6,500 lumens. Or a stoplight could be no brighter than 2,000 lumens. 
and that is a world is now basically worldwide for measuring brightness and intensity. And in the the old Australian design rules that go back back to 20 years ago, um, a headlight bulb, which I had here laying around, the brightest forward-facing light bulb for a motor car could be no brighter than 60 watts. That's it. If you put 100 watt light bulbs, it's technically illegal. You could blind the eyes of oncoming drivers and cause an accident. That's in Australia. In America, the brightest forward-facing headlight was 50 watts. In France, forward-facing headlights could be no brighter than 45 watts and they had to be yellow. So all around the world they had different measurements um, of a brightness and in, et cetera. Australia was 60 watts, which for the sort of driving we do in this country is sensible. That pretty well adds it all up. I've given you a little bit of a briefing. My normal talks are all about Austin 7s and Jaguars and MGs and Holdens and all that sort of old school, six volt and positive earth and negative earth. That doesn't pertain to you guys. but. It gives you a, bit, a little bit of an idea of um, uh, what all this stuff is about. Any questions? A hand, yes, ma'am. A few cars with their LED lights blind yeah. the hell out of me. Uh, that isn't necessarily the headlights. Um, my normal presentation, I have a whiteboard and uh, I draw little pictures of things and little parabolic reflectors and shapes. It's not necessarily LED lights. Um, modern headlights of what they got um, have got projector lamps in them. They don't have a traditional parabolic reflector like this. What they have, go back, all you know about having a slide night, colour slides to get the old projector out, you set it up in the lounge room and you put a slide, colour slide in front of it and project it. There's a lens in the front of that light source that projects the light down the living room onto your screen. That up there has got a projector lamp in it, exactly the same, a, a convex glass lens at the front that collects the light and sends it straight down onto the wall here. A motor car that has got projector lamps, which most vehicles have, the higher end vehicles, have got projector headlamps. Again, it is a way of getting efficiency out of a light bulb, out of an LED or a xenon or a light bulb. They have a projector lamp. They don't rely on a reflector. What they do, they rely on the lens in front of the light LED or light bulb to focus and concentrate the light directly down the road. Okay. Now, what you do see, you see cars coming towards you and the lights tend to flicker. And you might see a sort of like a yellow or a red or a blue sort of figure. Who's seen that in cars coming the opposite front? All of you guys are old enough to know Pink Floyd. Okay, who's heard of Pink Floyd? Yeah, okay. Okay, remember the famous Pink Floyd LP cover that has got the prism, the white light, and the, the red through to blue light coming out of the prism? Remember that? A few of you do, I'm sure. That goes back to high school physics again. You pass light through a prism. The prism separates the wavelengths of the light. If you look at a, a convex lens like you would have on one of these headlights, the very edges of a convex, again I've got nothing to draw, if you can imagine a convex lens that's wide in the middle and narrow on the out, outer corners and light is passing through it. The light is collected and sent straight down the road. If you look at the side of a convex lens on an acute angle, what you're looking through is the edge of a convex lens that is kind of like a prism. So any light that is passing through that escapes through that glass and what you're seeing, you're seeing the split of the colour of the light that has been emitted by the LED. So what you're actually seeing, you're seeing a little bit, depending on which angle and how the car's bumping and wh where you are on the road, you'll see these little flashes of purple or blue or maybe red or yellow. And that is that annoying flashiness. And likewise with a, any projected lamp, the light is 100% percent 
bright half a meter to the right of it there's no light so where it's coming towards you you'll get the cars going up and down over bumps in the road maybe weaving left or right what you're seeing with a regular light bulb you're seeing just sort of like a bit of a blur of light bright in the middle and it just dims off with a projector lamp you're seeing the bright light and then you're seeing nothing as it bumps up and down so it's kind of annoying kind of annoying you don't get that if you put an LED or anything in that you'd never get that flashiness because you haven't got that sharpness of the light does that answer your question yes. very good okay any other questions yes, Master 323s. I've, I've got an ordinary Master 323. Yeah. Um, how much would it cost me to replace the headlights, the, the globes? Premium, you can go from eBay stuff where you'd pay maybe $40, $50, okay. And the, the, some of the premium eBay isn't bad. The, um, the premium stuff would be uh, Philips, for instance, or Sylvania, and you'd be looking at probably $150 for a pair of LEDs they would give you the same brightness as a 60 watt halogen bulb they would again you're not going to get brighter headlights because if you remember i said australian design rules say that you can't go any brighter than a, so putting leds doesn't give you necessarily brighter lights but they will give you whiter lights rather than the yellowishness that you'd get from a, a tungsten filament type light bulb um, Philips, I manufacture a, an LED that I use for Model A Fords and Austin 7s and Jaguars and Holdens, etc. that is 6,500 lumens, high and low beam, fits into all their old headlights, and I use Philips Lumi LEDs, and they are the premium LED. So I would suggest a Lumi LED. I, I do sell them for H4s, but they're $150 for a, a kit and principally it's it's one of one of those that I showed you on the wall that's that's another version of it there and that would give you modern day brightness and whiteness minuscule current train and on a lot of that older uh, uh, Japanese stuff um, the headlight dipper switches and all the rest of it all the current goes through that switch on your steering column you're all losing a few volts and you'd be probably be lucky to get 10 volts at your headlights on a good day with some of this older stuff. With LED, that's not an issue, no current rate. And how about the life expectancy of them? You'd be looking at 20 to 30,000 hours for a premium. How old does that compare with About 300 for a, a halogen bulb. Again, depends on the quality of the halogen. <laughs> there's $5 halogens and there's $25 halogens. The 25, you'd be looking at maybe 800 hours. Um, premium LEDs and cheap LEDs. One LED out of the eight on the little cluster might fail on a cheap one. I mean, there's all sorts of issues about Chinese, Korean LEDs and reject ratios and where do all the reject LEDs go? They sell them to people that use them on all sorts of lower end, lower quality type stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, Do you have a, uh, a replacement uh, headlamp um, for like 1970s uh, classic car, a sealed beam? Yeah, sealed yeah, beam yeah. Beam. That's what, that would be a replacement for a conventional 7-inch sealed beam. Uh, right. Curved glass, yeah. convex glass, same mounting. Sell that whole thing yeah, yeah, yeah. They're about $40 a piece. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. And it gives you a brand new, brand new lamp. Oh, I have different qualities as well. That's a, a cheap aftermarket one I do have premium European ones as well yeah they're a bit dearer yes sir I've got a Nissan uh, X uh, uh, 1989 which I square headlights yeah, yeah. Converted to yep and I certainly need some more improved lighting yep um, can, can you provide a suitable light yeah well the LEDs the, the high low beam H4 style LEDs it's probably got H4s in it at the moment I would imagine of some sort yeah um, one of the LEDs would fit straight in to the back of that and draw about 800 milliamps. And do I get them from you or can I get them from anywhere? Are they, are they common? Get them from 
No, you, or you can well, you can buy them from me. You can go to Burson's and buy them. Um, I'm not too sure whether Burson's have got the Philips Lumi LEDs. I know they've got a three LED version. The Lumi LEDs are four LED versions uh, that are uh, six thousand five hundred lumens. I know the Burson ones are a good LED. Um, can't remember the manufacturer, but they've only got three LEDs on the high beam and low beam. Uh, to, so um, I can sell them to, or you can buy them in, but don't buy them on eBay. <laughs> okay. They're certainly designed to be a retrofit. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that's the thing, I think. Yes, but you can still go to Burson's and buy, or Repco, and you can buy stuff that you plug in that is not worth the $5 yeah. you, you pay for it. Right. Okay. Yeah, buy beware. Gentleman over here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you said you work on uh, uh, older vintage yeah. vehicles. Oh, I've got a 74 Combi. That's, not, that's um, new, but yes, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Getting, just yeah, the hella headlights, yeah. Keep going at the same time. Yeah. Um, 12 volt. Try to put LEDs in. Yeah. There's just not enough raw to make it, keep making the contact across the light. The, the across good... Across the connection. Well, firstly, you've got to make sure that all the connections are clean and possibly use what they call electro-lube. Have you heard of electro-lube, anybody? Yeah, it's a... Um, and... I have never found a problem that can't be solved in terms of clean electrics and good earths. Good earths is the thing. If you don't have a good earth return, LEDs will give you troubles. Oh, swear in the combi that Lucas made the lights from. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with Lucas. Nothing wrong with Lucas. I, I tell stories about Lucas. Um, there, if you've got good earths, there's no issues at all. I sell a lot of LEDs to uh, RSR, which are um, a Porsche... 356 uh, 911 Porsche people down in Edwardstown, um, and they're hella Volkswagen Combi electrics. No problems at all. But if you've got good earths and you've got good clean electrical contacts, they're fine. They're fine. They will work. Yeah. Sir? Have you got a card with your name? I have. I have. I have. There you go. Got a few there. If you want to grab one of those earlier on. Yes, sir? I think one of the most advantageous uses is in caravans. Oh, yes. You're doing off-road because yeah. I've changed all mine over. I've got a caravan and no at great all. expense I've installed my own LEDs into it. Me too. It took me, it, it took me a while, you know, it took me a while because, you know, because they are expensive. But no, I've, I've got LEDs in my caravan and they're fantastic. Mind you, I use it as a little bit of a, a, a test base for my LEDs. Like, I've, I've got 11 MGs, I've got a Mini Cooper, I've got a Jag, I've got an old, old Ute. And I use all of my own vehicles as test bases for all of my products that I manufacture. I run them, use them, drive up through the Adelaide Hills and go, no, yes, that's right, not worth it. And I get a lot of people that will come up to me at one of the shows or speak to me and I say, they're, they're going to cost you $150. And I say, oh, I can buy these things for $30 off eBay. And I'm going, well, fine. Oh, they're really, really good. You know, oh, they're fantastic. So on some occasions, I'll actually have a look at the product on eBay and I'll go and buy a pair for $30. And I'll get them in and open them up and I'll look at them and knowing with the, what I know about this since I've been doing it for the last 25, 30 years, I'll look at it and I'll go, that's not going to work. But I put it in and I try them out. And then I'll look at it and I'll go, I knew it wasn't going to work. I'll Wasted $30, but at least I've done a little bit of research and development. Um, some stuff does work quite well. Um, I like to think that the LEDs that I produce and manufacture and design, um, I design the electronics and all of that in them, so as they are the best around, because there's no point in making stuff that's as good as everybody else's, because why buy it from me when you can buy it elsewhere? Yes, sir? No, I just brought an MGB sitting out there. Nothing oh, terribly interesting. Has that got the nice lights in it? No. Oh. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. I can't afford to put them in my own car when I, when I can sell them to somebody. No, I've got an MGB. No, I've got... My, the vehicles that I've got are 1930s, uh, you know, like MG. I've got an MGTC, if anybody know what's, what's that, what that is. MGB, MGA, sedans, modern MGs, these Chinese things. I've got a couple of them. I'm going to be up at Toowoomba for all... No, 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 I will be. Yes, I will be at All British Day this year. Yeah. Uh, so, but not trading. 
No, I just got there for a bit of a look, have a bit of wonder around. Anything else? Yeah. Look, one more. Are you going to clock in cars up Blackwood last Sunday of every month? Yes, I normally go up and have a bit of a look. If I decide to get up that early on a Sunday morning. <laughs> no, I can't wait. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, I live up in Blackwood, just around the corner. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, walk there. Okay, I think... Thank you. Sure. We have a couple more segments to do with sure. the meeting and then stay. That's fine. I'd like you all to join me in thanking Anthony very much. Thank you. Pleasure.